Hi and welcome to another Sonic Academy video with me, Phil Johnston. Uh, in this one we're going to take a look at some of the new features in QBS 7.5, which is released uh, the other day. Um, um, the first one we're going to take a look at is track versions, and this is a really handy feature for me. I tend to um, use, do this sort of thing a lot, but um, previously I would have had to sort of make multiple tracks. And the idea is that um, if you've got a, a part and you um, maybe play some notes in. If you wanted to have a different version of that, you've now got a new tab called Track Versions, and you can open it up and you can uh, make new versions of the MIDI parts that you're playing, and they'll remain on the same track. Previously, you would have had to maybe duplicate MIDI tracks and sort of manage them that way, whereas this enables you to just keep it all really neat on the same track. Um, so for example, uh, this riff I have um, a couple of different versions. I've got um sort of more 8T eight, eight version and then a sort of faster version. And it enables you to really quickly jump between them so if you're sort of testing out different riffs or different vibes um, and you want to sort of mix between and you can have m many versions you can duplicate versions very easily and you can create brand new versions just by clicking on new versions and obviously you can delete so a very quick uh, feature but very very handy um, and the next one sort of ties into that um, for just sort of um, tidying your track up is visibility so we'll add a few more tracks here just so you can see how that will work so say for example you have a group of audio tracks move these to a folder maybe another couple of bass parts So if you wanted to sort of tidy up your screen, maybe you've got ghost kicks or other, you know, incidental parts, maybe um, vocals that you're not necessarily going to be using, you can very easily just hide those whole tracks. Again, another really handy feature is going to sort of speed up workflow, make things a lot neater on the page. Pretty simple, but effective. Um, the next one is track quick controls. Now if you haven't used quick controls before they're really handy um, especially if your synth um, doesn't have like macro controls on the front um, for example uh, Anna doesn't have any macros and sometimes it can be quite difficult to get into um, your oscillators to sort of mix them you just sort of switch pages with quick controls on Cubase, you can very easily load up some controls. Then hit tab. And there we go, we've got our all our oscillators in like a sort of mixer. And now what's really handy is you can then save a preset. And now anytime you want to sort of load a copy or synth up, you can just load it up and recall those controls. I did save some earlier, I'm wondering why they're not showing up. Maybe a different version of Anna that I'm using. Um, so that's quick controls again, another handy feature. Uh, re record, this is another cool one. So um, if I'm recording a part, let's play something in here. So we've got re record set up in our transport. Um, We've also got a pre-count on, and I have set this pre-count to just one bar. 
So if we hit record. And I'm not happy with that. I can hit record again and it'll jump straight to the pre-count. And I can keep doing that. Again, another really handy feature is going to speed up workflow. Previously, you would have had to hit record, stop, go back to the start locator, um, and hit record again to get it cycled up again. And that obviously can take a, a lot longer. Um, so it's just another super handy feature. This one's probably um, the most useful one for me. And it sort of brings together two features of um, Cubase that always seemed to, um, a bit separated or needlessly separated. Um, so creating instrument tracks previously, you could either create an instrument track like this and that would just stay there. You could edit um, your synth there if you wanted to um, and it would create a MIDI track built into it. Or alternatively, you could go into your VST instruments and create one there. Now they've basically brought this whole, these two sort of elements together into one VST instrument rack and track. So instead of having two separate areas, you know, you'd have your VST instruments and you'd have your instrument tracks. They've tied these together. So when you create an instrument track now, it is loaded into your um, VST instruments drop down menu. And you can also manipulate the um, audio outputs of plugins as well now which is really handy which you could only do in this sort of drop down you couldn't do from an instrument rack when you'd made an instrument track before it uh, it just give you a standard stereo out so that's a really handy feature if you're using plugins like battery with multiple lights or contact um, it means you can go in and manipulate the outputs direct from this page and it'll work with instrument tracks as well so again something that's pretty simple but really speeds up workflow um, and then what have we got? We have um, an upgrade to an upgrade to Groove Agent. So it looks a lot nicer than the previous version. Seems to be a lot more functionality. Um, one thing that I would suggest you do when you get uh, lo loaded up is just to quickly save the, a default preset. Um, save a blank one as the default preset. So there doesn't seem to be any way out of the box to just get a clean groove agent. Maybe I, someone can tell me if there is. But if you wanted to load your own stuff into it, um, it helps to have a default preset. There's tons of kits, lots of really good ones. It's definitely well worth checking them out, even if you've got some nice sample collections. There's some really good snares and claps and uh, percussion sounds that are definitely worth checking out. And there seems to be a lot more versatility in the ability to edit. It's nicely laid out. You've got easier access to all the elements of your sample filter envelopes. Um, You've got effects built into it now. I think you maybe did in the previous version, but this is a lot nicer to um, manipulate. Just seems a lot more thought out, way more features. One bug that I still have with Groove Agent is just loading individual samples in. Um, let me go to the default preset. There's a way to reset the preset, is there? So there's our default. Um, yeah, so again, you do still go into media, 
media bay or drag it from your yeah it's probably a good idea if you don't do loops in find some single drum sounds I would love to see in Groove Agent uh, just a sort of browser window maybe something like they have enabled and very simple you can just sort of go through stuff or even you know part of the media browser just sort of built into it um, I just think it would really speed up workflow compared to having to go in to media bay all the time again if I'm missing something please let me know um, And we can drag multiple tracks in, I believe. Can we somehow? Yeah, still don't know how to do that. So again, if someone has a an idea, please let me know. I believe there is a way of doing it by um, dragging the audio into uh, put on one track. I think you can glue them together as a region or something. This may or may not work. Yeah, so again, that's the only part of Groove Agent that I would like to see improved upon, really, is um, loading samples and making that a bit easier. And But apart from that, so I think it's a good update. And the next thing we're going to look at is loop mash. There's a there's a um, upgrade to Halion Sonic SE. Um, some new sounds, so check that out as well. Um, but we're going to move on to loop mash just to give you an idea, because it's pretty cool actually. And we'll just get rid of some of these tracks. So we will I'll load in a loop. I'd love to see this snapped somewhere, you know, just maybe up here, the way Logic does it, or Ableton. Which just make my life so much easier than having to go in all the time and open it up. a loop here and we can play about with it. So we'll go into our inserts and we'll load up loop mash. I think it's in other there we go. Loop mash effects. That's another real bugbear of media bay when it's in the, in the background of you loading your sample every time you press play it starts playing so we've got loop mash you can d divide it into um, eight sixteenths and then you've got these controls that you can sort of play about with um, so reverse it's like a scratch another sc slow down scratch it's a tape stop tape stop two start reverse spinny thing um, and then you've got sort of repeats and cycles so let's hear Try and get a better sample in there. Let's get 
uh, some stuff with some beats. Load up uh, insert again, stick lip mash on it. So that's loop mash effect, very cool for just adding um, simple um, stutters and reverses into your, into your stuff. Let me see how it works on riffs as well, that might actually be pretty cool. Can I drop it on there? No. Um, I'll go in to... Why can't I go into my There we go. Inserts are hidden down here now. Um yeah, so we got the loop mash again. So you might be able to get some interesting stuff out of that as well. So there we go. That uh, is a quick look at some of the new features for Cubase 7.5. Um, pretty good update. Um, and so far, so good. So thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.